Um, <clears throat> Anders and I worked on a book with some of our colleagues, System Center 2012 Orchestrator Unleashed. Final edit, uh, finished just a few hours ago, released to publisher. Uh, you should have one on the shelves in a few weeks, so pre-order now. Um, <clears throat> our agenda today, so we're going to start uh, with a quick look at Orchestrator, and what I mean by that is just a quick flyover of the Orchestrator architecture, which is, uh, which is really quite simple and very easy for you to digest in just a couple of minutes' time. And we'll have uh, a bit of uh, an overview of Orchestrator itself. So we'll look at the console, what it takes to put a runbook together, and uh, just get some of the basics under our belt uh, very quickly. We're going to have a look at the integration packs that are new in Service Pack 1. Uh, we'll also have a look at the integration packs for the System Center components. We'll talk about the Azure integration pack, and we'll show you uh, so, some nice use cases uh, for each of these integration packs where we can. We'll even have a quick chat about community integration packs. There's you know, no doubt you're going to come to a situation where uh, you, you can't find an integration pack, an activity to drag onto your orchestrator palette that does exactly what you want. Uh, and that's when community IPs out on the CodePlex site, out in the TechNet gallery, can really serve to, uh, to bridge those gaps quickly and easily. So let's start with a quick overview of orchestrator architecture. So like many system center components, Orchestrator is database driven. So the Orchestrator database, a SQL database, as small as seven, seven megs by default. So very small uh, and in your early stages can easily be shared. Uh, it can exist on a shared SQL server. You can make this database highly available through you know, techniques that you're familiar with, such as SQL clustering. Now our Orchestrator runbook server is where we initiate our runbooks. That's what's going to perform at least some of the activity. You know, we may have runbooks that make calls to remote systems, so your runbook servers aren't necessarily doing all the work, uh, but this is really what's managing uh, that work. And typically we can run uh, you know, into the hundreds of runbooks on a single runbook server to make calls out to you know, systems ranging from Windows and Unix computers to network devices, uh, you know, anything you know, we can connect to with, uh, with common protocols. We can make those runbook servers highly available simply by installing a second runbook server. So Orchestrator works on what we call the waterfall model. The primary server uh, fails to heartbeat three times, the runbooks will be picked up by its secondary counterpart and we can you know, simply scale out in that fashion by installing multiple runbook servers. And incidentally, we can change on a per runbook server basis where our runbooks prefer to run so we can spread that load out a bit if that's what we'd like to do. For our orchestrator operators, our users out there that will be initiating runbooks, will be using the runbooks but not authoring, there's an orchestration web console. So a nice interface they can open in a browser, uh, launch their runbook, provide input to the runbook if it requires it, uh, monitor its progress, uh, you know, even click a little button to see a nice picture of the runbook, to see a visual representation uh, just as it appears to you in the runbook designer console. And along with that, is the Orchestrator web service. So this is a RESTful OData web service that we can use to initiate runbooks uh, within Orchestrator from outside Orchestrator. So even if you haven't adopted the entire System Center suite uh, as of yet, if you're, you're still in progress, uh, Orchestrator makes it very easy for us to initiate runbooks from uh, any, you know, any variety of external sources using uh, technologies like PowerShell. <clears throat> the management server component is how our runbook designer console communicates to the orchestrator database uh, and, and how we, we uh, register and deploy new integration packs. That management server component, so a Windows service, it's not a runtime component, it's a design time component. So you really don't have to worry about that one for, you know, from a high availability perspective. It's not going to stop our runbooks from running. It's something we can replace quite easily uh, in the grand scheme of things. So I'm going to hand off to Anders now who's going to give us a quick tour of Orchestrator from the administrator perspective. So here we see the Runbook Designer console, which is our tool to build our runbooks. And if you're working with System Center today, you see it looks a little bit different than the other System Center components. Uh, it's because it's uh, it has a little bit different background. Uh, Microsoft uh, bought a company in the end of 2009, uh, Palis, that later became Orchestrator. 
But it's a quite nice console. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I like to think of Orchestrator as Visio-like automation. So rather than writing, you know, VB scripts, PowerShell scripts, etc., we drag and drop icons onto a workspace, a palette, much like you would a Visio diagram. So what we have here on the left side, let me zoom a bit. We have a navigation pan where you can structure, uh, build a structure, and have all your run books. So you can create these nice folders, and in each folder you can store your run books. We, on the top of the console, we have a couple of different buttons to run, start your run book, to stop your run book, to check in and check out run books. Uh, check in and check out means that when you have checked the run book out, you can edit it. No one else can use it uh, when you have checked, the run book, uh, checked out the run book. We have a shortcut to the run book tester, which is another console that you can use to test your run books. Uh, we have also a shortcut to the web-based orchestration console. So what's the most interesting fact about the run book tester that comes to mind? Well, there are actually three things, <laughs> I think. Uh, were to mention. Uh, the first one is that it's not really testing anything. That could bring some challenges. So, well, so it, is, it is testing, except it's testing for real, right? Yeah, that's a nice way to put it. So when you use the runbook tester, it will let you step through your runbook. It's very nice. You can see, you can step through each activity. You can see input, output, uh, runtime. So it's very nice but it's not really testing anything, it is executing. So if you are building a runbook that is, for example, deleting virtual machines, it will really delete the virtual machines when you run it in the tester. Um, and the other two things to think about is that it's using the local account, the account that you are running the runbook tester with. So it's not using your service account that the runbook will, when you execute the runbook for real, it will use the service account, but in Runbook Tester, it's using your local account, and it's also running on your local machine. Yeah, that's a great point. 99% you know, of the time when we have a Runbook that uh, executes just as we planned in the Runbook Tester, and then we check that Runbook in and execute with an orchestrator, if it doesn't work, many, many times it's that difference in permissions between the account we tested with and uh, the Runbook server service account. Yeah, so it's easy that you spend time investigating an error, troubleshooting something that is actually not the error. Because if you have checked it in and run it on your runbook service, it would have worked. Because it's a firewall port problem or maybe something with the permissions. So on the right side here of the runbook designer, we have all our different activities and different, they are divided into different categories. So we have the standard activities uh, and we have then later uh, a little bit further down here, I have the system center integration packs. And under each one of these, we have all our activities. So under operation manager, I have all the operation manager activities. And under Windows Azure, we have all the Azure activities. And we will come back to this a number of times later in this session, doing our demos and examples. So let's zoom out again. And down here, we have a pane where we can see uh, log history and we can see events. So let's build our runbook. So I right click over at my folder, do a new runbook, new runbook, get a new runbook. So in this scenario, in this uh, example, we will monitor our folder for new files and when there is a file in the folder, we will read the first line and insert that to our database. Not with the idea of making you an expert file monitoring professional here, but just to give you a good idea of how a runbook comes together, really what, what the anatomy of a runbook looks like. Exactly. So if you want to monitor a folder for new files, you pick the monitor file activity. Of course. So, so we're going to drag that monitor file activity on the palette. A lot of times we'll drag our activities out here in rapid succession before we link them together. And what's great about this process is, is what we can do in a script, uh, you know, in a matter of hours, we can typically you know, put together an orchestrator in a matter of minutes. So when Anders is done five minutes from now, I have a feeling you'll look at this and say, wow, you know, from a scripting perspective, that would have taken me quite a while. Yeah. 
And what you can see here on the right side is that we have a number of um, integration packs that we call the standard activities. And standard activities means that they are not really bound to any specific product. So let's, for example, this one, write to database. It could be any database. It doesn't have to be the SCCM database or some other application database. And then we have the more specific integration packs for different products, like the operation manager integration pack. That one will really only work with operation manager. So I have drag and drop a couple of activities. And uh, I connect them with links, as you can see here. Let me zoom. If I hover here, I get. So you notice when Anders mouses over that activity, he gets a little triangle there. We call that the link handle. And he gets his, uh, his crosshairs there. He's going to left click and hold and drag and connect and quickly connect these activities together. So we monitor a file. We read the line from that file. We write that information to a database. And then we delete the file. So you can already imagine, you know, imagine even in a, a very succinct language like PowerShell, how many minutes would you need to script to put that together? So now when we have drag and drop a couple of activities, it's time to configure them. So we double click the first one. In which folder do we want to, which folder do we want to monitor? Let's say we want to monitor a folder named order. And we need to set up a filter. So let's uh, monitor for a file name that ends with dot order. And let's trigger on new files. So we could trigger on rename, delete, and change also, but let's do new files. And then we want to read the first line of that file. Double click that one. And here comes the, a little bit of the magic here. Now we need to know the name and the path of the file. And we only know that the file is something dot order. So now we do right click, which we could do in any text field in Orchestrator. We do subscribe, publish data. And then we can pick data from the data bus. So all activities will publish all output data to the data bus. And other, all other activities can then go and pick up data from the data bus and use it as input parameters. Yeah, that's a very important point. And since we have a lot of new orchestrators in the room, orchestrators in training, uh, you know, every activity in this runbook will publish data to a shared data bus. This, this runbook will run in the context of a Windows process. And so from the second activity, we can read, we can consume that data, uh, you know, at runtime, which means we can configure this runbook to behave differently based on, you know, conditions that are encountered at runtime. So we can build in uh, very dynamic behavior simply by consuming data from the activities that were, were completed. Uh, before the current activity in the runbook. They're all going to share that data, and you don't have to do anything to enable that. That's just default behavior. So I pick name and path of the file. And I say that. And then I want to read line number one. And then when I go to the next one, write to data, database, I can now right click. And now, this time, you see we have two activities to choose from. Because now we're, this is activity number three in the runbook. So we have two previous activities that have published all the output to the data bus, uh, data bus. And we can now pick line text here and say it's uh, like that. And then we continue through all the, our activities. Set it up, say. Work with SQL here. This query database activity is one of my favorite. It's not really just for SQL databases. It's for any ODBC compliant database out there. So Microsoft SQL, Oracle, MySQL, pick it. And with the default settings here, if we open up, uh, open up a link, you see that the link is configured to move on if the previous activities is successful. But what if maybe the write to database activity doesn't work? Then we can go in here. We can pick an activity from the operation manager integration pack, like create alert, drag and drop, take, connect it with a link, double click the link, and say if the write, write to database activity returns no, not success, instead we say failed, go this way, and to make it a little bit extra clear, we do that one red, the line, and we maybe also change the label. 
So Anders is building some intelligence into this runbook. So if this activity executes successfully, we're going to continue down what we call a success path. If, you know, on the other hand, it fails, uh, he's configured this, this link filtering to take us in another direction, to, to basically raise an alert in, in operations manager. So you can imagine as you're building scripts, you know, I trust myself to write a PowerShell script that behaves just as I expect under ideal circumstances. Uh, but, you know, I'm familiar with Murphy's Law, and Murphy lives in my data center, so this really gives me some capability to build in, in intelligence very quickly um, you know, versus what I might have to do in a script. Yeah. So what you have seen in this demo, uh, and we will come back to Orchestrate the Runbook just in a couple of minutes, uh, what we have seen here is the console. Uh, we drag and drop activities. We connect them together with links. We can configure the activities, very simple very easy. We configure the links to control which way, which branch, which path we want the runbook to, to go. Uh, and once we are done, we click check in. And I will click run and it will start to monitor that folder for new files. All right. Thanks for that, Anders. So let's talk about those standard activities. Anders mentioned there are some activities that come in Orchestrator by default. They're not associated with a product. They're product agnostic, and there are a few dozen in the 8085 range, what we call standard activities. You'll find uh, system functions in there. We can interact with Windows services. Uh, as you saw in Anders' case, he was interacting with the file system, so lots of file and folder management. Uh, notification capabilities, so we can send emails, log event log events, and lots of uh, utility type activities in there that can query databases make calls to web services, probe URLs, uh, you know, even uh, perform uh, remote SSH, you know, shell, shell script type functions on remote uh, Linux, Unix, and, and network devices. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of capabilities out of the box. And then you know, we see Orchestrator as a, uh, you'll sometimes hear it called a code-free automation platform. I like to think of it as a light code automation platform because with the run.net script activity, I can leverage my existing VB script, J script, PowerShell, uh, you know, within my run books to, to enhance what I can do with these native activities uh, out of the box. Um, do you have maybe a PowerShell run book we could show them, a PowerShell integrated run book? By coincidence, I might have one. You might have one. Yeah. You've done this before. I have a serious amount of run books here. So in this run book, what I want to show you is how we can use .NET scripts in a very easy way. So I have a runbook here that reads a file on my uh, server, and that file contains a file extension. Let me show you. So the file contains just the file extension, exe. So I read that, and then I insert that into a script. So here I have the run.net script activity with a smaller script that lists all the files in the Windows folder. And as you can see, I can anywhere here in my script right click and do publish data and go and pick up any data from previous activity. So in this case, I go and pick up the line text. Let me expand here. It's a little bit easier to see it. And so at any point, we can intermingle free, free text that we type in ourselves and subscription data that we consume you know, from previous activities. So I input the file extension here, and I list all the files, in this case all the exe files in the Windows folder, and then I publish back the name and the file size. So publish data, I publish back file size and file name, so that in the next activity here, I can see which files are bigger than one megabyte. So when I run it, it will list all the files if they are smaller or larger than one megabyte. So what I really want to show you is the way that how you can use a couple of standard in orchestrator activities, do something, take the result from them, pass that into a script, do something else with your script, and then publish new data back to the data bus, then the next and the next and the next activity can pick up and use that as input data. Uh, great. Thanks for that. So, yeah, definitely uh, <clears throat> a lot of work we can accomplish in a pretty short amount of time. Uh, so let's talk about the Exchange integration packs that are available. So for Microsoft, there are two integration packs surrounding Exchange. There's the Exchange Admin Pack 
and the Exchange Users Pack. So the Exchange Admin Integration Pack is focused more on admin scenarios, creating mailboxes, moving mailboxes. If you wanted to do bulk moves and migrations, uh, you know, bulk provisioning and deprovisioning, lots of capability in the admin pack for that. Uh, the user uh, integration pack, on the other hand, is more focused on operations within a mailbox. We'll, we'll frequently use the user, uh, exchange user integration pack, uh, for monitoring a service account mailbox and taking uh, you know, ac action on messages that meet specific criteria and maybe moving those messages into other folders. With, uh, with bulk provisioning scenarios, for example, with a desktop upgrade, I've seen the, uh, the calendaring capabilities of the user pack used to send meeting invites to users that have requested upgrade at a specific time. Uh, <clears throat> and these, uh, these packs will uh, function with both your on-prem exchange and your hosted exchange. Uh, out in the community, so if you're not, if you're running exchange dot old, you know, something other than 2010 and 2013, out in the community on CodePlex, you'll find Exchange integration packs that support some of the legacy versions of Exchange Server. Do you have any Exchange? You well, just sam maybe some sample type run books? I actually have three Exchange examples. One that is quite good, one that is decent, and one that is like just extra. Well, since we're, we're streaming on Channel 9, maybe we could go with the good one today. So it. here's a good exchange runbook example. So this first example here, it's uh, for everyone working with Service Manager. Uh, a quite common um, ask is, do we have a change calendar in Service Manager? A, a calendar where we can see everything that will happen in our IT environment. Uh, it's really easy to build it. So in here, I'm monitoring Service Manager for new approved change requests. And when they're approved, Orchestra will pick that up and create an appointment in a shared calendar that everyone in the IT department share. So in a very easy way, we can now, in a calendar, see all the change requests that is about to happen, when they're about to happen, and in each appointment, we can also see all the details about these changes. Quite easy. Uh, it's four activities, uh, brings a lot of value, and really really quick to build, it brings, as Pete said before, if you want to build this with a script, yeah, that will take some time. So zoom in on that for us for just a second here. So, so this is an interesting integration pack, number one, because it, uh, it actually addresses one of the top five customer requests I get with regards to service manager. Hey, we need a calendar of forward changes. So Andres has done that in less than five activities. So that's the other thing I want to point out here. He has less than five activities. So how, how many activities would you say you have in the average run book that you put together, that you author? Maybe four to nine, at least less than 10. All right, so size does not matter, okay? That's the takeaway. Uh, less than 10 activities in the average run book. I think Anders has literally like 900 run books in his, in his development envir environment here. So, so small, modular, reusable, function specific, you know, run books that maybe do nothing more than log events, send notification emails in the case of errors, uh, you know, go look up the distinguished name of an object in Active Directory. So they're very modular, so as I build workflows, I can chain these run books together, I can call one run book from another, I, I develop over time a reusable library that's going to save me future authoring effort because I didn't try to boil the ocean in one single run book. If you ever get to a point that you're running out of space in your, your, your workspace here, that's a great sign that you need to take this run book and, and turn this into more modular, smaller, function-specific run books. True. So I have a, another version of the same okay. example, actually. So in this version, I have added a couple of more activities. Lucky for me, it's not more than 10. Okay. <laughs> So what I'm doing here is I also take the user that is, or the engineer that is going to do this change request and I send an invite to that user. So when the change is approved, we create, a we create an appointment in the shared calendar, but we also invite the engineer that is going to do this change. So another important aspect of runbook authoring. Now we're, we're automating a process and we're notifying the appropriate users at the appropriate junctures in the process. We're thinking about ITSM, about integrating with our service desk at the beginning of this process. It's not an afterthought at all. 
And then I know that you, Pete, you really like the SharePoint integration pack, so I've also added a create list item here. So if we have a SharePoint site where we want to keep track of things, we can actually upload a little bit of note up there also about this change. Okay, so, so in this one run book, less than 10 activities, we've, we've you know, interacted with the service manager, with operations manager, with our exchange server, with our SharePoint server. Uh, and, and the same goes as we move into third party systems from OEMs like IBM, HP, uh, when we look at you know, via, you know, vSphere at the, the hypervisor. So, so let's say that you need to change or modify anything in here. It's quite easy to open up this run book to understand what it's doing. And then you just double click, change something, check it in again, and it's, uh, it's updated. L much, much easier than going through 400 lines uh, switch, uh, 400 lines uh, PowerShell script. We have one more here. Then you can divide if you want this one to be the good one. Or... Okay. So this one is, you see, only two activities. What we're doing here is monitoring a mailbox, and whenever there is a mail in that mailbox saying where subject equals alert, we generate an alert in Operation Manager with the message body as description. This, it's quite useful. It's two activities, but you can configure a lot of Often you have these old devices or network devices or applications or, see, I guess you recognize her. So, so who, out there, who out there has a monitoring system that is not operations manager? So something other than operations manager. So what you have here is a poor man's connector. Your, your monitoring system can send an email, right? I hope your monitoring system can send an email. Uh, so, so with two activities in less than 15 minutes here, including going to get a cup of coffee, we now have a connector. It's one way. It's not sophisticated, but it's a first step, right? Yeah. So we can begin to bridge that gap between, between our disparate platforms. Is that number three? You good? You're spent? All right. Thank you, Anders. So let's talk about FTP. Now, a couple of things about the FTP integration pack. Number one, the name doesn't really do it justice. This also supports uh, SFTP and FTPS, so, so the common varieties of secure uh, file transfer. Uh, I've, I've yet to encounter an authentication scenario that was not supported uh, by this integration pack. Uh, it makes it very easy for me to build a runbook that will log into an FTP site, check for the presence of a file, a folder, etc., to create a file or a folder if that's what I want to do, to download something. Um, <clears throat> and it actually causes me to break a rule. So there is this uh, rule we have in Orchestrator that you know, the question is never can I do this with Orchestrator because I can do virtually anything with Orchestrator. The question is really, should I do this with Orchestrator? And one of the things I try never to do with Orchestrator is to monitor my, uh, my remote systems and services because that's what Operations Manager is for. This is the one exception for me. This integration pack makes it so easy for me to monitor uh, at a transactional level, you know, a secure FTP site in those important, you know, B2B, EDI, you know, e-commerce type scenarios that I use it for exactly that. And you know, after I, I'm done getting upset with myself, what I do is take one of those create alert activities you saw Anders use from the operations manager pack, and I add that to my run book. So if the FTP site is not functional, I log an alert in operations manager. So now I'm still using operations manager to raise the alert. But it's, it's bridging a gap for me. It might take me hours or days to write a management pack that would monitor an FTP site in a sophisticated way. Uh, this boils that down to uh, a task that's no more than a few minutes. What do you have FTP-wise for us here? This time I actually have a really good demo. I see more than 10 activities. Yeah, I know. I was just thinking about that. But uh, this one um, is actually from a customer where they receive information from uh, some of their vendors every night or every week. And they want to get that information and put it into their own systems. It's quite important to do that as soon as the vendor publishes any new information. They really need to get it into their systems. So here we have a run book that every night checks the FTP site and tries to download these files if there are any new files. If there are new files, we put machines into maintenance mode in Operation Manager so we don't get any unnecessary alerts. Stop a couple of services copy up the file to all the application servers, uh, make sure the file is actually there by checking the file status, start the service again, so the service starts reading the new file, and then we make sure by the 
we get the application status, making sure that the application is actually up and running again. And then we stop the maintenance mode uh, in Operation Manager and everything is fine again. Can you zoom in on this runbook for me? So I want to point a couple of things out. This is not a session on runbook best practices. I'm going to give you some anyway. I want you to notice that in this runbook, we have you know, the, the link you know, color coding here, where we have green for success, we have red for failure. You notice also Anders has labeled his links here. He's put some sort of description in there. And the, and the idea with runbook automation is we're going to automate processes across technology and support silos within our organization. We're going to make our automation more broadly supportable than a PowerShell script or a VB script. No matter how simple those might be, there are some people uh, that are maybe not as script conversant as you are. It's, it's hard to love another man or woman's code, right? So this, this is really meant to sort of ease that burden. So if you're building runbooks that are small, that are modular, that make it easy for your colleagues to come in behind you and see what you put together here, then you're headed in a good direction. All righty. Represent, <laughs> representational state transfer. Say that three times fast. The REST integration pack consists of one activity, invoke REST service. And this activity allows us to interact with OData RESTful web services, which incidentally is what uh, would describe the orchestrator web service. It is an OData RESTful web service. So imagine I am a geographically distributed, uh, shall we say globally distributed organization. Who works for a globally distributed organization? So perhaps I have orchestrator instances around the globe in my various data centers. I could quite literally use the web, serv the, the, the web services on my orchestrator instances with this RESTful invoke REST service activity here to invoke runbooks in orchestrator instances around the world to trigger you know, any sort of globally coordinated uh, automation sequence. <clears throat> I think you have at least one. If you can pull up maybe just a quick example of the RESTful. Absolutely. So here I have a runbook that will query an orchestrator environment for all running runbooks. And we can do that quite easy with the orchestrator web service. So I query the web service, ask all the runbooks that are running. Let me show you. So it asks here, status equals running. Returns uh, all those runbooks. But unfortunately, we get that back in GUID format, and that's not very friendly. So we do a XML query to get the runbook ID out of that answer. And then we do a new web service query. And and get the friendly name instead. As you can see here, we're using the grid from the previous activity, insert it into the new, um, the new query. And all suddenly, we, get, we can do a send platform event with the name in a very friendly format. See, me? see here? So if we go down here, we get an event like this, saying that this one is running. And yeah, that's correct, it's running. Um, another thing I can show you here also is that we don't really get it in that friendly format. We get a little bit more information, but we're using the built-in data manipulation functions here to divide the strings into smaller pieces and then just grab one little piece of it. Yeah, so a couple of points here. So Anders is doing some, some text manipulation. So when you're, when you're in VBScript or PowerShell, you might use functions like left, right, in string. Right, that's kind of what we can do here with numbers and, and with, uh, with alpha strings within Orchestrator. The other little bit here, you noticed he's using uh, an XPath query in that query XML activity. If you're not uh, an XPath query expert, which would describe me, w3schools.org gave me everything I needed, or w3schools.com gave me everything I needed to know in a little XPath tutorial in about 15 minutes. Quite easy to put together. <clears throat> Show me your other. Show me your other oh, really? run book here. I'm not going to let you describe this. So that one is here. Yeah, so you're not allowed to describe this. I mean, I'm going to just let you peek at this. So this run book actually goes out and takes the temp checks the temperature on a, uh, a weather-based RESTful web service out of the internet. And if it's hotter than a certain temperature, it sends us an email and tells us it's time for ice cream. So uh, having made the mistake of walking to the convention center yesterday, I think of this run book, and then I just go get ice cream. Um, 
Let's talk about the system center integration pack. So your system center components each have their own integration pack. Configuration manager, uh, data protection manager, service manager, ops manager, virtual machine manager. And you can already imagine, if you're, if you're familiar with what these components do, some of the scenarios that they enable. So with config manager, I can you know, dynamically create and populate collections, uh, advertise programs to those collections, force those clients to read those advertisements quickly and install software. DPM, the DPM integration pack enables uh, you know, all the way down to self-service data recovery through, uh, through Orchestrator. I can restore databases and SharePoint sites, etc. cetera. Uh, with Operations Manager, you've already seen us creating alerts in Operations Manager. I can reverse the flow there. I can monitor for an alert in Operations Manager and then go automate the remediation of the problem that caused the alert, if that's what I want to do. On a self-service basis, with Service Manager, you'll see a bit later in our session that Service Manager and Orchestrator are meant to work together. So through the Service Manager self-service portal, I can reveal uh, service offerings to my users that can, can accept input, which in the background drives automation, self-service activities through Orchestrator runbooks. And with Virtual Machine Manager, I can deploy virtual machines, services, and related applications on the Hyper-V platform, on the VMware platform, on the Zen server platform. So, so you know, all of the functionality that we see, uh, much of the functionality we see in these components is actually accessible to us through uh, the orchestrator integration packs. And, and what you'll find is if you're not a system center expert today in every, uh, in every component, you'll find that orchestrator allows you to interact with those components of the system center suite uh, situationally for specific scenarios. So it's a nice way to learn those, those components in the context of your job as you're building automation scenarios to meet uh, you know, your immediate needs. Maybe show us something in the service manager or operations manager vein. I actually have a couple of examples here. Okay. So this is service manager con the service manager console. I have opened up an incident in here. Someone can't print on a laser yet for. Someone is laughing there. Is there anybody in here that's as old as I am that knows that a laser jet four could not print in color? I've come to a sad realization. I think it's really funny. <laughs> so anyway, we have this incident here. We have a related machine also. So this is the machine where the user is working right now, can't print. So normally, in many organizations, uh, some help desk runner would run to that machine, start doing some basic troubleshooting, why can't you print? But instead, what I want to show you here is that I have built a task over here on the right side that I have named Orchestrator Check Computer. And if we run it, we will trigger a run book and we will insert data from the incident into the run book. So we are starting a run book with the web service uh, and we are passing in the incident ID from the incident here to the run book. And once the run book starts, I have the run book over here. And that's kind of an advanced scenario, isn't it? So we, we've actually revealed a run book within the service manager console. He clicks a button. It's going to go out and check several aspects of that system that are going to save you have some analyst somewhere a trip out to a desk. So, so the run book over here will start by getting the incident ID that we just passed in with the task. It will go and get the incident, connect the service manager, get the incident, find a related computer to that incident. And that sounds, maybe sounds a little bit complicated, but it's all default activities in the service manager integration pack. So it finds the computer. It starts by pinging the machine. Is it even online at all? Then it... If it's, not, if it's offline, it updates the incident. Then it starts doing a little bit more. It's checking uh, service status, if the machine is, uh, all the services are running. And it continues. So if you think about it, you could add whatever you want in here to check on that machine. So you could check, like, is, does this machine have the latest group policy? Is it online? Uh, is the user logged on? And so on and so on. And the nice thing here is that this is running in the background. The service desk operator don't have to see uh, orchestrator at all. But when we go in and open the incident, down here in the action log of the incident, orchestrator has 
written back data. So once orchestrator is done with this the basic troubleshooting, we assign the incident back to first line and they don't have to do all this basic troubleshooting because orchestrator have already done it and sent all the information back in here. Maybe orchestrator has even solved it and can yeah, close it. Yeah, really automate the fix. So at the end of the day, you know, what's really nice about this is not only that we're automating something that uh, an analyst would have to do manually, but we've now made this process more reliable. We've ensured that it's going, you know, that our run book, our, uh, our troubleshooting checklist is going to be executed in the same way every time. Uh, so we're not worried about the analyst skill set. We're not worried about the analyst forgetting to document, you know, the steps they've already taken. Uh, we, we've replaced a human process, really an annoying human task, right? And made sure that it's going to be completed in a very repeatable, reliable way. And if you now want to update this in any way, you just update the run book and the troubleshooting will start with a new way. You don't, really don't have to inform any way that anyone that now you also need to check this service or you also need to check this process. You just update the run book, they will continue to use the task and you will troubleshooting in the new way. Two more examples. Could it be this one? Yeah. So here we have a very small example. Um, it is. That is a very big example. I don't know. Let's start with the light version. Thank you. Yeah. So here we have, we are monitoring an alert in Operation Manager. A service has stopped, and we simply restart it and resolve the alert. A very, very simple runbook. And of course, we could do it a bit more complicated. Um, when you start knowing orchestrator a little bit, you could add on more and more. So in this case, we, if we can't start the service, we also do some basic troubleshooting there. Uh, if it's off office hours, we actually just reboot the machine. If it's during office hours, we do some more troubleshooting, ending processes, deleting locked files, try to restart the service again. And so no doubt Anders didn't build that runbook all at once. You know, you'll, you'll find that you'll build a runbook to the point that it functions as you expect more or less. We call that the, the drag drop done version. And we'll go back and we'll add an activity here, an activity there, a bit of error checking, and our runbooks evolve into something a bit more sophisticated and more reliable over time. So you really don't have to boil the ocean uh, as, you're, as you're building your runbooks. You'll start Simply, you know, pick, pick something that you can, can automate in a few minutes' time, right? So I think this is the most common scenario we see around monitoring is, is automatically restarting a Windows service, something that's easy to do, very reliable, and solves a very common problem. We good? We good on System Center? Okay. The man with a thousand run books, or at least 900 anyway. So Windows, Windows Azure. So we can use... Uh, orchestrator to interact with Windows Azure directly uh, to create, you know, to, to deploy virtual machines services to, to create disks or to go clean any of those items up. So just as easily as we can use Orchestrator to deploy something in our virtual or physical environments, I can use it to go clean those things up. Uh, you know, in fact, one of my favorite virtual activities is I like to run a, a execute a runbook that will go out and check the age of my virtual machine, the expiration date and email the owners to ask them if it's okay that we can delete those or can they go delete it for me. Kind of uh, a simple aging report. These seven uh, category activities, we call them, can be configured with 63 activities so they behave uh, in specific ways to suit our scenario. So, so very flexible um, <clears throat> in terms of, of the capabilities with, uh, with Azure. Um, do you want to show me an Azure example now or shall we just go ahead and... I think we need to talk a little bit about the integration before we go to demo. Okay, so, let, so let's talk about integrating uh, Orchestrator with Service Manager. So specifically, we'll look at this, you know, Azure as a, an easy scenario. Um, <clears throat> you know, it starts with creating a runbook. So I'm going to build a runbook that will deploy a virtual machine in Azure, for example. I'm going to test that within my, my runbook designer console. I might use the runbook tester. I'm going to make sure it's functional. Uh, then. I'm going to synchronize uh, my orchestrator runbooks over into Service Manager using the, uh, the native orchestrator connector over in Service Manager. So now my runbook appears in Service Manager, and I can connect 
uh, a runbook automation activity to that uh, runbook that now appears over there in Service Manager. I can add that activity to a template. Uh, a template is just what you might think. It's a, a partially completed form. So it allows us to build um, a form in Service Manager that will complete an activity in the same way every time. We'll carry that task out in a repeatable way. I can associate that, uh, that service request template uh, to a request offering, which means I can now publish this in my self-service portal. So I can show the user an interface that's something akin to a help desk ticketing system. So everybody can fill out a help desk you know, ticket in our environment, right? Just about everybody. Um, I can validate their input. So Service Manager makes it very easy for me to configure you know, data validation. So if I'm looking for a numeric string, I'm looking for an email address with a specific uh, you know, domain name, that's all very easy for me to put together. Now once I have, have created that, I'm done with the build process, I can now publish that uh, request offering to my catalog and my user can fill out the form in the self-service portal. Pretty easy for us to build forms that users can complete with little or no training. When they hit this, the submit button, it's going to create a service request, a work item, which will trigger that runbook automation activity, which means service manager is going to, via the orchestrator web service, within that service manager connector, service manager is going to trigger that runbook. So now the user's input has been uh, you know, basically put into this process to create a virtual machine or a service or some artifact up in Azure. Uh, what's more, as that progress goes on, service manager via that connector, via the orchestrator web service can monitor the progress uh, of that activity. When the process is complete, our service request is going to be marked as complete. You know, it's going to be successful. It might have failed. Uh, you know, if we build our runbook with proper, proper error handling, uh, or your orchestrator is going to fail that runbook. Service manager is going to pick up the failure. And we'll have an accurate read on how our process wound up. So let's have a look at this from uh, an orchestrator and service manager perspective to see what this looks like on the outside. So in this example, I have configured a number of runbooks that together deploy a new web service in Windows Azure. I have synchronized these runbooks over to Service Manager, created runbook activities out of them, based on them, and then I have put that into a service request template and published the service request template in the self-service portal. So I can now go into the Service Manager self-service portal, I can click Windows Azure, I can click Create New Web Service. Go to Request Form. And I have this form here that I didn't need to write any code to get. I will show you quite soon how we did that. Uh, I fill in the data. And as you can see here, we can't submit if you don't fill it in. You see it's red here. And that brings a lot of value when you start working with Orchestrator because often you want to validate the input data into your runbook. You don't want your runbook to start if you don't have all the data you need in the correct format. To do that with only Orchestrator, you need to build it yourself with activities. And that requires, often requires a lot of activities. And often you want some kind of review process before you start a runbook, and you want some kind of tracking, who approved it, who ordered it, and what was the result, and so on. All that you get in Service Manager. So even if you're not going to use Service Manager as your primary incident tool, for example, incident management tool, you can still use it just as a front for Orchestrator because it brings a lot of value to Orchestrator. Who in here has a, a ticketing system, a service desk, other than System Center Service Manager? Yeah, so a lot of you. Uh, so the bottom line, what we want you to carry away from this is this as a, as a user interface is great because it's easy for users to interpret. We can validate their input and we can use Orchestrator to integrate with third party service desk components. So it's not really a zero sum game. This, this can live in harmony with your existing CMDB and service desk. So in this scenario, we fill in the form here. I fill in all the, all the fields. I click next and submit. What will happen is that we get a service request work item, and that's what I have here, a service request. And you can see we can 
Here we can see everything that we just filled in in the portal. We can see it here. And also, we can see that we are using the service request template for new Windows Azure Web Services. So under activities, we have a number of activities. And all these activities, let me click on one. Well, the first one is the approval step. But the rest of them, if we open them up, you can see it's a, it's a runbook. And if you have a good naming convention, you can actually find that runbook in Orchestrator. Um, sometimes when you're building too many runbooks and you start to synchronize them, it's just a mess. So a good naming convention is really something we recommend. So this is a runbook activity. And if we go over to Orchestrator, I have all the different activities here, or all the different runbooks that are activities in Service Manager, and they're all doing a little bit of deploying this uh, new web service in Windows Azure. They are uploading the service package, creating cloud service, creating deployment, and so on. And everything, all the result here is published back into Service Manager, so each of these runbooks are totally independent of each other. They get all the input data from the work item or uh, in Service Manager. And um, okay, we're running a little short on time, so we might want to yep. tie this one up. I don't think we actually do that. Yeah. Let's go. So, um, just going to look in here. So, just a quick look here. So, once you have synchronized your runbooks and you create this uh, request offering in here. We just show you this um, the wizard. There is a wizard here that you can just step through. And what I'll say about this process of connecting uh, a run book within Service Manager, I didn't find it to be intuitive. Uh, I went out and watched a tutorial online, something off of the, the TechNet website. Uh, and I had to practice it a couple of times. I think I was about two or three times in, and then it was a process that I remembered, and I could, I could repeat it yeah. uh, reliably. So what you can see in here, this is the wizard that we follow to, to publish anything in the portal. In here, we can configure everything we want the user to input before we start the runbook. And as you can see, we can here on the right side, we can configure what kind of data should that be. We can do configure, and we can configure like it needs to be the string, link, uh, string length need to be some specified, specific, or we can say that it should be, for example, a date, and then we would have a date time picker for in the portal. We can say it must be upload a file, it could be radio buttons, drop down menu, whatever you want. Yeah, so bottom line, you have a lot of built-in validation here. So if you need to, to validate numeric ranges, text strings, you know, email addresses, or, or you want to provide your regular expressions of your own, uh, that's all available to you and, and pretty easily accessible in the, uh, the, on the service manager side of things. So from a third party perspective, you'll see integration packs uh, for OEMs like HP and IBM. So if we want to do uh, out of band management, so in those data center scenarios where maybe I want to uh, restart servers um, you know, out of band, power them on, power them off so I can scale in, scale out my data center, think about green IT initiatives. Uh, you have service manager. Uh, is, an, is a name for an HP service desk component. So native integration there for you know, opening, closing, and updating work items on that platform. IBM Tivoli, a monitoring system, so I can inter interact with other monitoring systems to, uh, you know, if I want to do an, an alert forwarding scenario, for example, kind of a manager of managers, uh, or to you know, automate opening, closing, or, or you know, documenting remediation of alerts in other systems. That's all possible. Through, uh, through some of the off-the-shelf management packs that Microsoft provides for third parties. You see VMware vSphere at the bottom, so maybe your organization is a VMware shop today. Maybe you don't have Virtual Machine Manager. This is a great management pack for leveraging Orchestrator to automate virtual machine provisioning, deprovisioning, uh, you know, checking on aging, you know, watching for our VM sprawl, for example. I can interact with my resource pools. Um, <clears throat> so very easy. Uh, Easily accessible for, uh, for VMware admins. 
So runbook best practices is not what this session is about. That's about 75 minutes on its own. So this session ID here, SDB317, is a session Anders and I put on at MMS, the Management Summit in Vegas, just a few weeks ago. And if you're interested in more best practices around runbook automation, how to manage your runbooks and promote them from development to test to production, that's a great session to get answers to some of those big questions. So let's talk about the orchestrator integration toolkit. There will come, sooner or later, uh, a point where you come to an activity that you're looking for that does not exist. You don't find it amongst the Microsoft packs. You can't find it from the community, from the System Center Alliance partners, or from, from CodePlex. So with the orchestrator integration toolkit, I can take my PowerShell scripts, my VB.NET, my C-sharp code, and I can create activities of my own. I can create integration packs, collections of activities. Uh, I can convert my script, a PowerShell script, and I've done this. So I'm, I'm an IT pro like most of you, presumably. I can write PowerShell script. I'm not a .NET, not a .NET coder. Uh, I can build a PowerShell script that I can turn into an activity in an afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> the integration toolkit comes with a couple of versions. It comes with an SDK version, which is meant for leveraging your .NET code to create uh, activities and integration packs. There's also a CLI version uh, that's intended for converting your PowerShell scripts into activities. So why would I do that? Well, maybe I have other people that need to repeat an activity, a task in runbooks, and they're not great PowerShell scripters. I need to make this easy for them. So converting that script into an activity is going to make that easily repeatable for other people within my org. There's actually a great series out there, uh, Orchestrator 8-Minute Demos, 8-Minute Videos. Charles Joy actually has an 8-Minute Video, which uh, you know, full disclosure is more than eight minutes, where he actually walks through how to turn a PowerShell script into an orchestrator activity. What do you have for us here? So I have an example here where we will create the activity that lists files in a folder, um, something that we don't have as a standard activity. So we start the command line wizard, and this is, so when you install orchestrator, you can just download and install this tool also. Do next. Input name here. List files. Where we want to store the, the file. Store it here. On desktop, it's always good. Then we know where, where it is. Oh. And then in here, we just add all the activities we need. So start by adding the, the list files activity. And it's a, let me zoom. It's a PowerShell, PowerShell based activity. As you can see, we can choose run program, run command, Windows PowerShell, or uh, SSH uh, command. So let's do PowerShell, input a name. And in the background, this is creating a, a DLL. Anders was actually prompted to save a DLL, so he's not going to write any code to do it, but this wizard is going to generate uh, a lot of, of information for us in the background. So here we need to input the command. And I want to list uh, all the files in a specific folder. So I do get child item. And then I need to specify the folder. But I want the user to specify the folder. Wouldn't be a very good activity if I hard code a folder. So I do add on parameters folder. And I pick that the Display style should be folder, because then you get this little nice browser in the activity. Like that. And then I go up here and do insert folder. So he specifies a parameter like you would in a script. And or the wizard here, our, our integration toolkit, is handling the, uh, the heavy lifting with regards to the what we might call complicated syntax, you know, that that we might have to look up otherwise. And I want another one, another parameter to specify the file type. Go like that and insert it over here. How many PowerShell scripters do we have in the room? How many not PowerShell scripters do we have in the room? Don't be ashamed. Yeah. So the first, the first activity I, I created with this integration toolkit was with somebody else's PowerShell script. So. If, you can, uh, if, you, if you're good at borrowing other people's PowerShell scripts, that's what uh, you have the TechNet gallery is for. Yeah, good at searching at the internet. 
So once we have the whole command in here, and it could be a quite big one, now we only have one line here, we can, do, we can configure what kind of data do we want to publish from this one. So I want to publish the file size and the file uh, name. So I, I just input name, properties, name. So now he's creating the data that we're going to publish back to the data bus automatically every time this activity runs. Mm -hmm. Seems good. I don't want to add more activities, so I do next. Building the DLL file that Pete was talking about earlier. So there's our .NET assembly build, done, done. deal. And I can click build integration pack and the other tool will start where I can just fill in my, my product name and my category. Category is the little header that you will see in the integration uh, in the runbook designer console. Make sure that you don't put a category that already exists. Uh, so I fill it in. I can change the icon here, quite important. Uh, and when I'm done, I have an integration pack file. So let's fill in demo here. Did you say the icon is quite important? Yeah, I think so. A okay. good icon can do a lot, even if the script is a little bit bad. Good icon. What I can do here is that I can attach files that my integration pack requires. So let's say that maybe I invoke an external script or another program. I can attach it here, and it will be deployed together with the integration pack. I only have this activity, still only that one. Uh, this is where I want to store it. So I store it. Um, yep. Next. So it's building it. And a couple of seconds from now, we will have a new integration pack in the temp folder, see? And once I have that, I can use the deployment manager to integrate and to register and deploy my integration pack. And then I have to restart the Runbook Designer console, but once I have done it, I have my little icon over here, my little activity, get files in the demo category, and I can drag and drop it into a Runbook. And when I do double click, I have the, can select folder here, and I configure it to be a folder, so that's why I have this really nice way to pick a folder, fill in the extension, and when I, if I look at the send platform event, see I publish the length and the name of the files from my own custom activity. So as you could see in this demo, it's not that complicated to build your own activity. So as, as Pete said, if you have a lot of scripts, a lot of commands that you're using very often today, or maybe different teams are using them, it's a quite easy thing to build an activity or integration pack, and it's so much easier to use it when it's a real activity instead of just a lot of scripts. Yeah, so that was uh, your, your first integration pack in five minutes. I was actually on the phone with, uh, with Anders, and someone was asking him to help them with an orchestration scenario, and said, I need your help. He said, take off your pants. And I had to ask, so what do Anders' pants have to do with this? So there's this, this sort of private joke within Microsoft in Sweden that Anders is up all night writing run books in his boxer shorts in the basement. So, so Thanks to for do, bringing so, that up. So to do his best work, if they call him during business hours, they ask him first to remove his pants so we know that he's in his, his normal working mode. It's good I'm behind the desk tonight. <laughs> wow. You know, with that accent, he can say almost anything, and it sounds OK, doesn't it? Uh, so let's talk about community integration packs for just a minute. What I wanted to point out uh, on the CodePlex website, orchestrator.codeplex.com. Is that the right? Yes, that's, that's left to right for you guys. Scorch.codeplex.com. You'll find many community-developed integration packs. Many of those community people are Microsoft people. Microsoft absolutely encourages you to download those integration packs and use them if they work for you. Some of my favorite activities come from those community integration packs. You'll also find out there, you might, you might want some sample runbooks to get you started, right? Out there at orchestrator.codeplex.com, you'll be able to download a, a zip archive that has literally hundreds of runbook examples that you can you know, simply import into your runbook designer and It'll give you a nice basis for reference, certainly. So, so rather than building from the ground up, you can borrow from those that have you know, gone down the road before you. 
You're trying to no, flip. I've already shown that. Oh, okay, you were showing, thank you. And I think Anders is guilty of building a couple of integration packs on his own. So hopefully this has given you some ideas. We really wanted you to walk away today with some use case scenarios in your mind that other people have found to be common. Uh, since we have so many new orchestrators in the room, hopefully you have an appreciation for how uh, orchestrator works, what it takes to, to create your first run book. So, um, <clears throat> You know, as a first step, you can go back, you can install Orchestrator on a single machine in a few minutes' time. Uh, you know, out there at channel9.msdn.com, you'll find our MMS session from the Management Summit where we talk about some of the decision criteria around determining which use cases in your environment are going to be mo most advantageous for your organization to, to automate, uh, you know, based on the effort and the return on your investment. So definitely do some planning before you take this into production. And it you know, will wish you long and happy lives as orchestrators. Make sure you fill out your eval. And as always, be honest but generous when filling in the eval. <laughs> hey, so we'll take questions up here uh, as long as you like. I think we're the last session of the day. So uh, come visit us if there's uh, anything you'd like to talk about. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>